Today, we're gonna to be ranking guitar brands from worst to best in the category of $1,000 to $600. I have a video of under $600 and I plan to do an under $300 and over $1,000 category. To be clear, to be on this list, there's a couple things. First, you have to be manufacturing guitars as of making this video. We're not talking about old guitars or old brands. Other thing that's important is we're not talking about used guitars and we're also only talking about import brands or import guitars, I should say. We're not focusing on anything else. We're looking to see who's making the best guitars, who's got the coolest stuff, who's got the best value. To be on this list, I have to have some experience with the brand, whether they're owning it, repairing it, uh, reviewing it, something. So I have reference of the brand. I at least I had put my hands on a few of their models before we do this. And I, of course, I look at other categories like how many guitars they offer in each category, uh, what's the overall brand value, what are the features, what's the fit and finish, how many times have I repaired brands like this. So if your brand doesn't do well, just put in the comments down below why you thought it should do be better. Uh, a couple of you guys uh, made some really good points on the last video. And uh, I'm not saying I changed my mind, but I have considered what you said. Let's start with number 40, which is vintage guitars. Now I rated them pretty well in the under $600 category, but the over $600 list to the $1,000 list, they just don't have a lot of interesting guitars in this category. First of all, there's nothing about them that's superior in fit and finish, and there's nothing exciting about the designs. I'm pretty sure these are made in Vietnam, but they could be made in China or Indonesia as well. Now, number 39 is Aria Pro. Aria Pro is not made in Japan at this price point, we're, so we're not talking about a Japanese brand at this point, but the guitar offering is very slim. There's only a few models, and most of them look exactly like what LTD and other brands are offering, and again, no brand recognition. There's not a whole lot of outstanding quality to put them ahead of other brands, and it's just very lackluster. Number 38 is Fret King. Now, Fret King, I wanna tell you, fit and finish is great. A lot of these are made in the Mir factory in uh, Korea. Very good quality, obviously designed by Trev Wilkinson, someone who I really, really admire. However, these guitars have a very Reverend feel, and let's be clear, Reverend has a much bigger category of guitars in this price point. And technically, Fret King shouldn't be in this list because a lot of their guitars are over $1,000, but I constantly found retailers discounting them under $1,000, so I thought let's go ahead and put them on the list. Number 37 is Greco guitars. Now, Greco guitars are made in Japan. The quality is really good. The issue I have with them is a couple things. First, they're about $650, $630. You gotta understand that in that price point, there is a lot of competition for a Strat and Tele style guitar. Number 36 is Depento guitars. Now, here's a brand I really should just fast track them up to the top because they're just a cool, cool guitar. There's only a small group of guitar players looking for something as crazy as a Depento. If you are looking for a guitar like this, keep in mind they're on the high end of the spectrum. They're about $950. So these guitars are gonna put you close to $1,000. The fit and finish on them are pretty good. I've never had any issues that I've seen. Playing them is kind of fun. Like I said, it's just an out there kind of crazy guitar. Number 35, which is Washburn guitars. Now Washburn guitars is interesting because I didn't even think they're gonna make this list because when I think Washburn, I always thought about affordable, more affordable price guitars, sub $500. But Washburn has really put a heavy focus on acoustics. And although I think they make some of the best acoustics around, especially for the price. They make the N24, which is a great guitar. They have guitars with the Stevens Cutaway. There are some fantastic guitars that you can love. Number 34 is Hagstrom. Now Hagstrom is a brand I brought up on the sub $600 line. I thought they would fare better in this because I thought they would be in these price points more, but you know, there's just a lot stiffer competition out there. Number 33 is Eastwood Guitars. The Eastwood Guitars is a great brand. Interesting enough, when I when I reviewed the one I did, uh, they told me it was made in Korea. Although when I look at their brand as a whole, it never says where they're manufactured. I found one or two that say made in China. I've never found anything else that said anywhere else. So I'm not really sure where they're manufactured, but they are good guitars. Number 32 is interesting because it's court guitars. They make probably half, if not more, than the guitars on this list. Pretty much anything made in Indonesia is coming from court or Samic. Now, court as a brand is just not that interesting as a $600 to $1,000 guitar. To be honest with you, when I look at those guitars, when I played them, there's just nothing about them that makes me want to buy a $600 to $1,000 court guitar. Not because they're not quality, the fit and finish on the guitars was good. They're their looks are kind of boring. They don't really get as involved as the brands that make them build guitars for them. And their value, to be honest with you, back in the day, Court, you could buy a Court for almost half of what the brand name guitar was, and that was a real savings. Right now, it's about 20% less. It's not the huge savings it used to be, so it doesn't rank as high. 
Number 31 is Framus. Now Framus makes the D series. These are made in China and option wise, they put good pickups in them. There's really not a whole lot to offer besides that in this price point. If you want the German made ones, those are about three to $7,000. However, I think for in the price point, you're gonna see there's a lot of offerings in this category and there's just a lot of dominant force. Number 30 is Supro. Now Supro is made in Korea and the quality is very good. Trev Wilkinson is the designer behind these guitars and I'm a huge fan of the Supro guitars, but believe it or not, when I was weighing a couple things, including the fact of other guitar brands, they just didn't rate as high. There's nothing about them. And to be honest with you, as many times as I've played one, I've never felt the inkling to own one. Number 29 is Agile. They really are on the bottom end of this price point. In other words, they're not really in the thousand dollar range. They're in the low 700s to high 600 price point for the most part on the few offerings they have. I think they only have one guitar that's six string in this category uh, for price point. Otherwise, everything else would be seven or eight. Number 28 is D'Angelico. I'm with Sarah and this is the official way you say Di Angelico, but also D'Angelico if you're Italian. Now, I love D'Angelico guitars, but this is a semi-hollow and solid body list. We're not really focusing on hollow bodies. I plan to do a worst to best hollow body list. And of course, I think D'Angelico will do much better on that list. Number 27 is Revolta guitars. Now, Revolta guitars are made by Eastwood. So we have the same issue. I don't know where they're manufactured or I don't know what country they're coming from, but the guitars look cool. So this is like their sub brand of Fano guitars. They were some of the most impressive guitars I played at the uh, 2020 NAMM show. And I have to say, I thought they were really cool, but that being said, they just didn't rank any higher. Number 26 is Michael Kelly. Now, Michael Kelly guitars are made in Indonesia and they're very Fender-esque. They have a lot of tellies, a lot of strats, and they have some Les Paul shapes. They're owned by Sam Ash, but they're sold at other retailers as well. I think there's better offerings in the telly strat market in these price points, so that's why they didn't rank as high, but check them out because they are cool guitars. Number 25 is GNL. Now, I know what you're thinking. Didn't GNL rate really, really high on the Tribute Series under 600 bucks? They did, but you gotta understand they don't offer a whole lot of guitars in the over $600 category, which makes sense because once you hit over about $1,000, you're now talking about their American line. Now, the ones they do offer are really good, but one of the things that hurt them is they're not much better than what they offer for $500. So the reason they got hurt was if you're looking at a GNL, the $500 ones I think are fantastic. The six to $700 ones are maybe the same. Number 24 is probably gonna upset people because it upset people on the last list. It's Gretsch. A lot of people seem to upset that I rank Gretsch so low on these lists. You gotta understand, this is a solid body and semi-hollow body list, which means the hollow bodies are left out for another list. And I think Gretsch is gonna dominate on that list. When I think affordable hollow bodies under $1,000 that are fantastic, of course Gretsch dominates. However, that's not the case with their solid bodies. They're very good. Uh, most of them are made in China, but they're just not gonna rank higher. Number 23 is Guild Guitars. Now, Guild did well on the last list. They're doing great on this list as well. They're made in Korea and they have great fit and finish. If you're looking for something different, they have that cool old Guild vibe to them. They have a great aesthetic if you're liking that old school look. They're one of those brands that not making those entry level low price guitars and they're not making crazy outrageous price, you know, $6,000 custom shops. They're really focusing on uh, making good product at the right price. Number 22 is Tajima. Now, Tajima made the under $600 list, but that was for their made in China product. When we're talking under $1,000, Tajima is the made in Brazil product. So these are products that are made in Brazil. They would be equal, in my opinion, to Fender's made in Mexico facility. Number 21 is Dane Electro. Now, Dane Electros are made in Korea. They don't offer a whole lot of guitars in this price point. They have a few guitars, $699, $799. They really don't venture up to the $999 price point. So although they do really well on this list, they didn't kind of dominate it because they don't really dominate this price category. They're a brand who really is actually, sadly enough, their sweet spots in between these two lists. So if I was gonna make a 500 to $700 range, I think D Dane Electro would really kill in that category. But based on the price points I picked, this is how well they did. Number 20 is Kramer. And what I like about their guitars is they're not loaded with a ton of stuff. Some of them just have one Seymour Duncan pickup and a Floyd Rose bridge, and that's all you need. Fit and finish seems pretty good. They're made in Indonesia and uh, they look cool. One of the things I gotta say is they're nailing the way they look. When I see them, I kinda always want to Kramer now. Number 19. So it made it in the top 20, Chapman Guitars. Now, some of you guys were upset and some of you guys are happy that Chapman didn't do better on the sub $600 price point. But in the $600 to $1,000 category, Chapman makes a lot of offerings and these guitars are either made in Indonesia. Some few ones are made in Korea, but the bulk of them are going to be Indonesia now. I think Chapman to get into the Korean line, you have to go over $1,000. I found that with the Chapman guitars, the more expensive they get, the better they get. It seems like they have more, they have the ability to kind of guarantee better quality 
quality as the price increases. Number 18 is Dean. Now Dean didn't do so great in the under $600 category because I feel like I always have to repair some of their import lower price guitars. However, in this category, what you'll notice in the over $600 price point, a lot of the guitars that Dean offers are made in Korea. The fit and finish is fantastic. There are some guitars in there that will rival some thousand to $1,500 guitars. Number 17 is Sterling guitars. Even though they kind of have more guitars in this price point, which gives them points for having a variety of products, uh, their fit and finish doesn't much improve. In fact, that's one thing that's factored into this when I was looking at this. Some of the guitar companies will give you the same quality at under $600 is over $600, and that actually hurts them, uh, helps them when it's better for less, but it hurts them when it's not much better for more. They are great, however, I find the more expensive they get, it's not so much the better they get. Even though the quality is very good, it doesn't really improve as we go up. Number 16 is Jackson guitars. These guitars are mostly made in Indonesia, which is gonna be the dominant force, so you know it's a good point, time to point out. Almost all the guitars on this list are made in Indonesia. Feels like two factories are making all these guitars. Probably not far off from that. Number 15 is EVH. Now, the interesting thing about that is they have two different manufacturer origins in this price category. In the $600 range, lower $650, $700, you're going to get Indonesia. Once you hit closer to $800 to $1,000, you're going to be made in Mexico in the Ensenada factory. Both guitars I'm very impressed with. In fact, this is one of my favorite guitars in this price category. And I don't know why I didn't rank higher. I ranked it, scored it across. I like a lot of things. The One of the things that did hurt it, though, is because they don't really put a finish on the neck where, I'm, where I live, where it's very dry. Dry. I do a lot of fret sprout issues with that particular guitar, and that's kind of something I had to factor in as a repair. How many times did they come in for repair? Number 14 is Yamaha, and I'm scratching my head going, how did Yamaha beat EVH? I thought I liked EVH more, but the Yamaha stuff is still really impressive to me. I have to tell you that the EVH Yamaha thing was almost equal, and to be honest with you, I think if I would have plugged in one little thing different, or, or kind of you know, thought about it just a little bit differently, I could see where EVH won. But either way, let's just say that was a tie. Number 13 is Dean Zielinski. Now, this is not Dean. This is Dean Zielinski. Some of you guys might remember that Dean Zielinski was Dean Guitars. Then he was with DBZ. <laughs> now he's Dean Zielinski. Again, another issue where I can't figure out country of origin because they're not labeled on their guitars. I couldn't find any. It's like a pool stick, it's, so it's a little different. It's, it's definitely a neck that if you love it, you love it, and if you don't, you hate it. But if you ever tried one, if you ever get the chance, please check one out. Number 12 is Shiji. Now, Shiji is a brand you probably never heard of. They're made in China and I have to tell you they're some of the best playing guitars I've ever played uh, period at any price point. These guitars rank in at around $7.99 and they come with Quarter Sun, uh, Roasted Maple Necks, uh, Godot Bridge, Godot Pickups. It's a guitar that I liked when I did the review. I have to say I like even more now. They're just growing on me and more times than not when somebody comes over and plays a guitar, it seems to stand out more than any other guitar for its quality. Number 11 is Epiphone. Now I have to admit, I thought Epiphone would make the top 10. I'm a huge Epiphone fan. They make a lot of great stuff. This is a price category that's good for them. However, However, I think, again, they fall victim to the $500 to $700, they would be killing it, but in the $600 to $1,000 category, once you get up there in the higher price, they don't offer a whole lot of Epiphones at $1,000. What they do offer is pretty good, but not dominating the market, so to speak. They uh, do manufacture their stuff in China, and it is very good for how it's built. One of the funniest things ever said to me was I once had a customer come in for a pair and ask me if I can make his Gibson play as good as his Epiphone. Uh, that's never ever stop making me laugh. So who's gonna be in the top 10? Well, the first one in number 10 is FGN, Fujigen. These are made in Japan, so keep in mind, same manufacturing that makes uh, a Prestige by Ibanez and stuff like that. Very cool guitars, um, very basic, but if you're looking for like that Sir kind of really nice fit and finish, usually comes with brand name pickups, very good quality, and again, sub $1,000, made in Japan. Check out Fujigen, or also always known as FGN. Number nine is Godan. We sell Sometimes in the USA, Godin. It always gets everybody riled up. I did a uh, How Do You Say video where I asked manufacturers to tell us how do you say it. I'm with Mario, and this is the official way you say Godin Guitars. I still say Godin because I guess it's a US thing to say Godin, so you guys can fight that out in the comments. The uh, importance of this is, although I gave them number one in the $600 category because they are uh, Canadian parts assembled in the US, in this category they didn't do as well because there's some stiff competition once you break $600. They have more offerings in this price category, including a Tele style guitar. Number eight is Solar Guitars. The one I own is $699. Uh, the others I've played were all $799 and $899. Fantastic guitars. My 
Celeste Solar is still one of my favorite guitars. Uh, of course, they have that cool look. Uh, he, Ola is a great YouTube personality, plus a, a fantastic musician. And what's important is it's another brand that a lot of you probably have not tried. So if you get the chance, like I said, check them out. Number seven beating out Solar is ESP Guitars, which is really LTD at this price point. You're not an E2 yet, and you're definitely not ESP. E2 would be the Japanese uh, manufactured uh, units, but they would be all over 1000 if not over one, uh, $1,500. So this is the LTD brand. Most of their guitars are gonna be made in Indonesia. Some are gonna be made in Korea in this price point. Either way, fit and finish, fantastic guitars. Number six is Ibanez. Now again, another one that was funny on the under $600 price point. A lot of you guys, hey, I can't believe Ibanez did so bad. A lot of you were like, I knew it. But once you break $600, you start getting really good guitars. I personally feel once you break $1,000, you're getting really good guitars with Ibanez. Once you hit that close to $1,000, over $1,000 price point. But in this category, they did really good. In fact, I was shocked. I thought for sure there was going to be LTD uh, inching them out, but I was scoring everything out and I was factoring everything in and thinking about it. Just for some reason, ESP uh, is great. LTD is great, but Ivan has just inched it out. Now we're in the top five. These are my top five favorite manufacturers. And let's get into number five, which is Charvel. Charvel, if you guys seen the reviews, I think you cannot beat what Charvel is doing in the under $1,000 price point with tons of features like go to bridge, Seymour Duncan pickups, Alder bodies, roasted maple necks on some of their models, uh, locking keys and let's be honest Charvel is a great brand made in Mexico and number four is PRSSE. Now PRSSE are made in Indonesia now. Yes, they make all their guitars now by Cortec, and so they're all made in Indonesia, especially under the $1,000 price point. One of the biggest questions I get is, are they as good as the Korean manufactured ones? As a whole, yes. Now when I say as a whole, I can't speak about everybody's guitar in every situation, but what I can tell you is nothing that I've picked up has flagged me to go, oh, I wish they would go back to the old manufacturer. I think they're doing a really good job. But keep in mind, uh, I said this in the last video, PRS is one of the companies that when they get the guitars uh, in from that manufacturer, they pull them out and check them. So you're not gonna see a ton of defective product. Uh, some people say, I've seen one. You're gonna see some, but you shouldn't see very many because they're filtering the defective product out. Number three is Reverend Guitars. Reverend Guitars are made in Korea in the Mira factory. This is uh, really one of those brands that I could easily say should be number one. I love the way they look. I love the design. I like the vibe of the company. I love the idea that they don't make inexpensive entry-level product and that they don't make really high-end crazy price product they're just making great product at that mid price which is expensive but again not the crazy uh, you know super cheap or super expensive price points number two is Schecter guitars now Schecter guitars is of course one of my favorite brands uh, this price point under thousand dollars you're still talking Indonesia I know a lot of you guys are gonna go no Korea there's a few models made in Korea at this price point but most of them in the six hundred to a thousand dollar range you're still in their Indonesian factory but still very good stuff a lot of offerings especially in the left-handed section a lot of left-handed guitars, a lot of cool stuff. I don't think I've ever uh, talked up a brand as much as I've talked up Schecter. And I think it's because it's a brand that I think when you compare it to guitars that are two and three, four times the price point, they always hold their own. So that brings us to number one, it's Fender guitars. So we're talking about the made in Mexico Fender guitars, Telecasters, Stratocasters, Jazzmasters, guitars between uh, uh, $600 and $1,000. Man, do they dominate this market. In my opinion, you cannot beat a made in Mexico Fender guitar. And in today's Today's day and age, the Made in Mexico ones, the Player Series, I think is fantastic. I reviewed a Player Series where I pretty much said that it felt just as good as a 2008 era uh, USA made Strat, and I still hold true to that statement today. Very good stuff. I think if you buy a um, Player Series of a product from Fender, I think you're buying a product that is really going to hold value in the long term. It's a it's a it's a lifetime guitar, and the fact that it's it's just a brilliant guitar that's going to last. It's a good quality guitar. So you guys may disagree some of you guys may agree that's where it stands the one thing i also love is is that they're also giving you the fender branding that's really cool this isn't the sub branding of squire some of you guys are going to say hey what happened to squire squire doesn't really make any offerings over 600 dollars so that's what's interesting you're in the fender land so think about this you can buy for the 600 to 700 range really impressive fenders and another thing that made scored them high too is some of the most impressive fender guitars that they have the player series are 650 so even though this is 1000 to 600 dollars 
Fender is in that really lower range of that $600 are the, uh, the range of this category and they're still dominating. So that gives them points too. So there you have it. That's my worst to best brands for under $1,000. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you agreed with, what you disagreed with. Let me know if there's other lists you'd like me to do. These lists seem to be really popular and uh, they're kind of fun to make. So I think maybe that's why they're fun to watch. I'm not sure. I know that you guys have other things that you can do with your time or watch and I appreciate you watching and spending some time with me. Don't forget, if you want to support this channel, you could just hit the like button or subscribe and hit that bell icon. Until the next time, know your gear.